In 2017, I left my home and job to travel the world. A lot's happened since then, and the world already seems such a different place. But what doesn't always change is our beliefs, our values, and our passions. For me and many others, I'm sure recent times have made us reflect and to remind ourselves what we value the most. As I travelled, I wanted to not only see the world, but to feel it, to understand each other better, and to share the voices of the inspiring people I met. I decided I would travel with a set of questions. Life questions, I guess. What does it take to love someone? What do you value the most? Are you scared of dying? When did you last laugh? Those kind of things. I would film and interview different people from four very different countries of the world. The four key nations I focused on and lived in were the United States of America, Japan, Cambodia and India. I wondered how similar or how different we all are. Maybe by asking the same questions to different people of different backgrounds in different parts of the world, we could make the world a little smaller and each of us a little closer a better understanding and a sample of our diverse world. None of these interviews were pre-arranged and each person I interviewed is a true sample of whoever I met along the way. And together, we created Four Sides of a Coin. So let me be the traveller the whispers in your head There'll come a day where you can take your chance and start again and there ain't no shortcuts to a place worth going to To make your path blind to the most amazing view You can look out and know It ain't where you've gone, it's where you're going Japan has certain value of course like anywhere else but also everybody has a different value for me most important thing as not only Japanese but also as a human I think um, you have you, you kindness is most important because uh, you have to be kind especially the time when you have a hard time I mean, it's so easy to be nice to each other when you have a good time, right? But this, this is the, the moment of truth, I think. So, that's, I think um, that's the ultimate test about your personality when you have a hard time. So, that's what I think for everybody and then also it applies for Japanese people too. Love, brotherhood, equality. Uh, with equality, I don't mean financial equality because that is not something which is in my or for that matter anybody's control. But yes, we do try to see each other as as equal as possible. So that is the one thing which I like about being Indian and about India and about my people. Uh, although you can have a debate on this, but still, this is my opinion, and I think. At least uh, like 70 or 80 percent people are like me still in today's world. Um, I, you know, uh, with America, it's you have different values in different parts of America. It's such a uh, it's such a large country, and where I grew up in the Midwest, uh, the values that we had um, were very. Uh, we, you know, our families were very tight knit. Um, family values, which uh, just until you know basically being brought up to not be an asshole. <laughs> um, but that's different, you know, in different classes, different um, parts of the country, and just, it just depends on the family, I guess, because certain people are brought up to be assholes. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but uh, I think one of the values that um, I see, it's, it's not a value, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's wrong about this country is that people are, brought up to think that they need to succeed, they need to be the best that they am, they are in, in terms of uh, financial success and, and, and they get greedy. And where I come from, that's not how I was brought up. It was I was brought, brought up to be, um, just be a good person, be 
good to the person next to you, help everyone around you, just be a gentleman. Um, and those are the values that I think, um, and those do exist in this country, I swear. <laughs> they are there, they, you know, it just depends on where you are. I have to answer for friends, right? Um, well, it's... When, when you grow up in France, I think we have the... We are very lucky people. Because we are free, we have free education, and uh, that we can shape ourselves the way we want. Uh, we can think the way we want, and uh, I think it's a very important thing because when you travel, you think you see it's kind of the only thing that kind of always miss in some countries. Be yourself. Uh, I'm living in Cambodia right now, and I can see that for some young Khmer people, it's really hard to be what they want. They have the weight of tradition on their shoulder, and you can see that sometimes on their face because it's always like, ah, I want to be a singer, but my dad wants me to be a dentist, but I hate going into people's mouths, you know, so my life is going to be miserable. So I think in France we have that kind of luck. It's we grew up to be able to shape ourselves and to think it's very important in France to be free of thinking what you want and have the tools to express yourself. And uh, here it's maybe something that's missing in Cambodia yet for the country to move forward would be speed of a free a freedom of speech, freedom of speech, sorry, and um, freedom of expressing yourself more and getting a bit loose of family tradition I, I would I would say. I would say that in French we have strong traditions but we can go forward. We can we can live with them but they're not the only thing we are. It's not only about tradition. We can be French and I don't know, a singer, a songwriter, a dentist, uh, make bread, but, but, but we hear it's, it's something is missing yet. In, and I think the young people here in Cambodia suffer a bit about that. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's a kind of a balance to, between tradition and freedom and modernity. And I think in France we have that luck. We can have both. Okay, I think Cambodian people is um, faithful. Most are faithful. They uh, are very fast to trust someone. Yeah, and also very fast to untrust the people also. So when they feel happy with uh, the guy, then they just like offer everything to the people that they trust. So I think Cambodian people is uh, easy to, I mean like easy going, something like that. Yeah. Important role users will be culture. That's the number one out here. In India, culture is very important. When it comes to the traditions, we are very much stringent on how it should be done, how it needs to be portrayed towards the world, and how it really needs to be celebrated. But obviously, with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, obviously. I was born in China, but uh, mostly grew up in Japan and had the, uh, I'm having the, um, the relationships and the friends, everything, and in living here in Japan. So I feel here, I feel Japan is my country, of course. I feel like uh, Japanese people, they are very honest and kind kindness and also they are not so smart as Chinese people but they are doing things very carefully and they treat people very respect people respecting I want to ask Michael Jordan. I want to interview him. He's a hero of my life. I grew up from college seeing his basketball games. Questions? Plenty. I would love to. Uh, on a serious note, I'd like to put a bunch of leaders right now together. So be it my Prime Minister, be it Trump, be it maybe even Hitler if he were alive. 
and I would seriously like to interview them and ask them questions. Why are they doing what they are? Or why have they done what they have? I'd probably ask my dad, and if I could get the truthful answer out of him, I'd probably ask my dad if he really believed in the Mormon religion or not. Or if he just did it because it, he knew it was giving him a better quality of life or something like that, or, or it was doing something else for him. But but ask him if he was uh, if he still if if he really believed in in what they preached. Cause I always wonder if he did. So. Yeah, <clears throat> it's an interesting question. Mm. Yes, uh, the question that I want to ask that somebody it is still alive or somebody is dead, the, the question that I'd ask, how they successful with their life? I want to get the uh, experience from them, especially like uh, my grandfather or my uncle, because they are old people and they got like uh, a lot of experience. So. The question I should ask them, so how they successful in their life, what they do, and then I want to follow them about the, their successful, so yeah. Actually that would be my great grandmother, she lived until 100 years old, she passed away when I was 20, and she seemed to be really uneasy, carefree. Um, content person. I've never really seen her, you know, upset or depressed or sad. So I wanted, I mean, I would love to ask her how, well, what her philosophy is because, yeah, that I would love to have been lived like her. Well, which I will be able to still, but yeah. I want to know her secrets. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I would ask uh, Johann Sebastian Bach <laughs> um, what he thinks of modern music and what he would do. Uh, I would like to see what Bach would do with technology as it is now, as he was uh, such an advocate of the technology of his day. Um, and I would like to see what he would do with that technology. Okay, I will ask uh, Pol Pot, the one who killed Cambodian three million, about three million. Then uh, I want to ask him why he, he killed the people, <laughs> why he why he happy to do that. And maybe ask him more, uh, who, who is the one, I mean like who is the one that make me, make him become like a very bad guy, I mean like always like want to kill the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, so my question is, you ask him why. I will ask some bloody politician, why you are doing politics in everything? Can you just not think of betterment of the society, betterment of the people and betterment of this place which we call universe or earth or world, whatever you like it. Well, one of the amazing things is going to go back to George Orwell in 1984 is um, <clears throat> when you read that book, which was written in the late 30s or early 40s, um, it's so spot on with the way the world is now. I always wondered, was he just guessing and stabbing in the dark or did he have a process to figure out oh, if this work that happens tomorrow and then this happens next week, that happens next year. Did he think that he had worked a formula out or was just guessing completely what might happen in the future? Like a sci-fi writer might go, okay, you can do warp speed and blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's things we haven't discovered yet. But George Orwell wrote this book and things he wrote about in the 30s or 40s are exactly what's happening right now today. So did he calculate it or just guess it? That's what I'd love to know. To say love means 
Mm. To be happy with someone and to respect as they are. And be happy with that. Hmm. That's all. Not about um, I want I want um, I want a handbag for Christmas or well, not like that. But just to be happy with their existence. Hmm. Mm. I think it love. I I think a. It, doesn't change definition changes all the time for me but I th I would say it more or less it doesn't change a lot and I think right now I would define it because it does change over yeah older the older I get the more it changes but I'd say it generally it stays around the idea of it's just unconditionally accepting someone re regardless of of their faults um, and what kind of person they are I guess the you know maybe you can't accept them if they're violent, but you can accept everything else about someone if, if you, as long as they're not violent towards you. And I think that's the key thing about love, and especially when it comes to uh, a partner, uh, that's kind of what it really means to me. It, it's just uh, accepting someone for who they are and then going through life with that person. It's also the same reason with your family members. You accept them unconditionally. That means if they go to jail or prison, or they become addicted to drugs, or um, they do whatever unthinkable, well, that person still has your love. Uh, then that's that's I think if you can have that for a few people in in your life, that's important. So that's what love is. Love actually means to care about someone, to think as to how they must be thinking about you to think about how they need to be treated to feel what they want to feel like and uh, to kind of replicate the same kind of caring and uh, the amount of genuineness the kindness that they're showing towards you the generosity everything matters so it needs to be replicated that's what i think that whatever they try to do for you you equally must try to do it for them to make their life much more better well, 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 to love someone, um, respect. The first thing that comes into my, man, my mind with love is respect. It's respecting his or her choices. And um, in French, we have a saying. We say to love someone is not to look at this person, it's to look like at the horizon together. Like, don't try to shape the person, don't try to change me. If you love me, accept who I am and support me at any cost, any time. And I think in French we take love very seriously, <laughs> but also freedom and respect very seriously. So I would say if I love someone or if someone loves me, I don't have to change for him. And uh, he would be happy with my choices and um, supportive and proud. Love can be explained in three forms, I would say. One is materialistic, one is mental, and uh, the other one is kind of in between. It's like a mixture of both. Mental is more like on a psychological level, like, you know, I'm just doing everything for them, just sacrificing. So love is a very important part, which includes sacrifice. If you don't have any something like sacrificing, then you cannot love someone because you need to really in some situation you need to kind of give up your own s selfish thoughts and everything and you need to be selfless to bring out their happiness into their life so it's about being selfless and the other thing is the materialistic part where you can just give them with flowers chocolates or uh, with a car also if you're like pretty rich as rich as Dan Bilzerian or something and like you know you can just give away a Porsche or a Range Rover or a BMW I wish you know I just get someone like that but who really doesn't want a Porsche or something because like too tough for me to probably take me years to buy one but who understands me you know who understands me from within who understands when I'm sad when am I happy when do I require someone's support when am I depressed I don't really have to 
gain sympathy I really have to gain attention so that's pretty much what love is about me you know it's all about sacrificing it's about being selfless what I think it means to love someone is to love them unconditionally um, no matter what their faults are uh, to hold no resentments towards that person and to forgive them um, if they wrong you um, just to have them in your heart and always be thinking about them um, you know just unconditionally through thick and thin for better for worse I tend to go for well I tend to fall in love with people who are going through a rough time <laughs> because I think if you can accept someone going through a worst time and being like worst even to you then you can love them anytime you know so yeah that's and I think that's what I would want them to do as well like you know when I'm when I'm at worst I would still I mean I would love them to be there for me so yeah that's what it like for me to love someone well I think that changes as you get older um, that's, that's a very hard question I don't know or I've had experiences on it and I think it changes I don't know uh, you, you know, when you're younger, you have girlfriends and you think you're in love with them. And then you're not. And that goes away. And then years later, you go back and then, who, who was that? What was her name again? But at the time, you felt like that was the most only thing in the world. And it changes as you get older. I think it changes to you, you know, of course, you always like wanted to, uh, rebel against your parents and stuff and then as you get older you see them getting older you know you kind of think oh well you know oh you know people, you know everyone wanted to run away from mum and dad and then when you get a bit older you go oh my god what did they put up with me you know what i mean what a nightmare i was to those guys oh i feel so bad you know so you always love your parents or you should do if you don't and then having had a child you, uh, which I have, I have a 30 year old daughter, you go, well, oh my God, I'm just, you know, the parallel thing with that, of what you thought about your parents, and you think, well, is that what she's thinking about me? She's gonna go, oh my God, Dad, shut up, go away, I wanna get away from you, whatever. I don't know. I've been married twice, thought I was in love, well, one of them I thought I was in love with forever, and that ended, and uh, that's to be decided. I don't think you're ever like suss that question out really, you know what I mean? I think blood's thicker than water, so it's always about family and stuff. If it's like your parents or your brothers and sisters or your daughter. But sometimes it's not even the girlfriend or the wife. It's, I think it's the family thing, you know what I mean? It ties you together tighter than uh, people come and go, man. And uh, I don't know, that's a, that's a very tough question. I don't think I've actually figured that one out. All, about, all I know, all I know is that, you know, there's your, your immediate family and any siblings you have, that's people you love. And people that have jumped into that scenario or equation, sometimes jump out and they've gone and you can sometimes forget them. They're like, they never existed. You know, after like 10, 20 years, you go, oh, I was married to, what was her name again? It was like it never happened, you know what I mean? But mums and dads, sisters and kids, they're always there. They're the ones, you know what I mean? It's like the random other people just come and go. So you're gonna, I never, you'll never know about that one. That's a, that's a tough question. Looking at it in a religious perspective, um, it's 
what I've experienced in church, in Catholic church, or in um, the Pentecostal church, and it's you die, and you, and it's it's very biblical, right? And so there's um, there's a waiting period, then you get called up, and there's kind of a judgment day, and um, and that's what I, I think I, <laughs> I think I believe it's a constant like um, kind of questioning that I have, um, but I do think there's something else. Um, and I don't know if it's, you know, a reincarnation type thing or if it's just, you know, you go to this, you go to a heaven or, or a hell or, or what have you. And, I, and I'd like to think, this is something that I battled a lot, especially in, in, in a, at university. It was, um, you know, if, if this is an essential, like, philosophical argument, if, if God is, you know, an omnipot omnipotent, omnipresent and you know, I'm like all good person or being, then how's there a hell or why is there bad things? And so that challenges all kinds of <laughs> things in my world, right? And I think everybody's world, um, regarded, regardless of if it's God or it's, or any other supreme being. But I think that's, <laughs> like I said, I don't have the most confidence in it, but um, I think it's, we we die and at some point maybe there's a judgment sort of situation that happens and then it's uh heaven <laughs> not too sure about that one at all <laughs> <laughs> okay um it's an interesting question because um um when i die i find out of course um uh, there are many theories like maybe i reincarnate into somebody else or I go to heaven or hell maybe there's nothing like that or I just uh, I become a light and I belong to the bigger light uh, or I'm just maybe this is just an illusion whole thing is an illusion of inside of chemical reaction of brain so but um, and then, you know, uh, when I was a child, I was scared of death and I, I read a cartoon, a comic about uh, Firebird, which is a phoenix, it, it, it rises from ash and have an eternal life. And then that's, this comic told me about reincarnation and then it, it fits better to me. So I don't impose this to anybody else, but for me, Reincarnation is, it makes sense to me. I know, that's the end. <laughs> and that's what life should be. It's here or never. Uh, what I believe happens, or what I think happens, um, you know, I, I'm, I consider myself a man of science and a religious skeptic, having grown up in, in a religious community. Um, I don't necessarily believe in life after death. Uh, I believe that life is something that's a gift and um, rather than focus on what happens when you die, I think you need to focus what happens when you're alive. So for me, I believe that you know we return to what we came out of. Um, I believe that the body is, is broken down into, you know, it, its elements and it becomes a part of life again, it, you know, a rebirth. Um, you know, I don't necessarily know what happens, what the soul is or where it goes or what happens or if that's anything. I do believe in energy that is everlasting and there's something to that. Um, but I think the whole purpose of not knowing is, uh, is what's important is that we, we're not meant to know. If you're meant to know, then that's, you know, uh, <laughs> you've crossed, you, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, I, I don't wanna know what happens when you die because, well, then you're dying. And so I, I don't wanna know, I just wanna know what happens while I'm alive. And I think that's what's most important. Actually, uh, well, my family is Buddhist, so we kind of believe in re reincarnation. But I think um, we're just gonna be turned into an invisible soul and wander around 
whenever, you know, wherever they want to go, whenever they want to go. Yeah. I don't know exactly what would happen to anybody when he's dead or when he's no more. But one thing is for sure that and not just me, everybody, any damn person in this world, whenever he dies, he leaves some memories behind in the heart and in the minds of people around him. And I would make it a point and I have made it a point so far to, you know, leave good memories in people's mind. And that is what I intend to do in whatever life the Almighty has given to me. If you still have your life, you, you need to do good things to say to everyone. Because after you die, that nothing, nothing happened to you, and you cannot come back again. Yeah. Who knows? You can't really ask anyone that because they'd be dead, so you can't talk to them. But I'm sure you just. Uh, die. I mean, the only thing that uh, you know, you talk, people talk about life after death and reincarnation and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I, that could happen is that uh, through your DNA, through procreating and stuff that some part of you just does carry on somewhere down the line you know that you would say oh you just your mannerisms are the same as your granddad you go well that's probably because in your DNA strain it probably you do have same mannerisms or same interests same skills you know like oh you just you play golf just like your granddad or whatever you're, you're a great dart player because your grand or you play guitar because your granddad did I don't know, but I'm sure that something does live on in your procreation DNA strain. It's got to, because uh, <clears throat> you know it's, uh, uh, you've accumulated so much uh, information while you're alive, and then you have kids. I'm sure that's passed down either just from talking and hanging out with them, or but also in some sort of bloodline kind of thing. But that's about it. I don't know. But if that's you could answer that question. I don't know. Okay, I have the answer <laughs> because I'm a Christian, so I know uh, when we are die. Uh, uh, after we die, then we have to go. For sure, we go to heaven. I'm go to heaven. We are go to heaven. Success would look like being proud of what you said you would do. Uh, no matter what small it could seem, if you say I have to do this or I want to do this, if you manage to do it, if you are proud of what you did and if the people you love are proud of what you did, I would say it's success. For me it doesn't, kind with, it doesn't come with the notion of money or like proud or um, celebrity. It would be just be proud of you or what you achieve. If it's, even if it's just like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to get uh, one hour earlier and uh, you just did it, which like for me it's always a, such a big success. <laughs> so I would say just go for it, be happy and if you make yourself and other people happy and proud without hurting anyone, because I, I, I think it's um, something important in success, it would be without stepping on other people, if you can manage to achieve something without crushing everyone around you or everything, that would be successful. Success is, is uh, following, it's following whatever you find passionate to be in life. Uh, it's following your passion. Um, and I think most most of us ultimately know what our passions are. Hopefully, if you don't have any passions, then you're probably in a little trouble. Hopefully, you can find some. But um, I think most of us have some passions. Some of us have a lot of passions. But it's when we're I find when we're not doing the things that we're passionate about that um, leads to a life that is not worth living it's staying in a relationship with someone you don't care about it's uh it's not doing the things because you're too afraid that you wanted to do like going to another country or um starting your own business whatever that is uh it's not about a matter of failing or succeeding say financially it's just you know a matter of doing the things that you wanted to do and 
and uh, and rather than cowering in the corner and um, being afraid to do those things in the face of life which is extremely uncertain and unsettling and we don't know if we're gonna you know be around tomorrow or the next day or if we're gonna be here 50 more years but in light of that fact that's what success is that you carry forward and hopefully do the things that you care about in life so like for that for me that's generally traveling walking uh, right now it's gardening I'm putting all my energy into gardening right right now because I'm not traveling so. it's all about the value it's about value of people so like for example I have that much money right now I could go buy a Rolex or I could buy like a very hot like a pretty hot shot watch you know a gold plated one silver plated one but right now if you see I've got a pretty simple watch the watch that I have right now is of a fast track watch it's like a probably it's a very cheesy one I would say which normally kids wear back in like 10 cent or something with a rubber strap normally even like a metal strap or something but this watch I've been wearing since the past nine years the reason being so nine years you can imagine you know it's like two way like Nine years is like a pretty long time, so I'm still wearing it because of the value. My this watch was gifted by my dad to me on my birthday. So right now my dad is no more, but the only thing that reminds me of him is his watch. A lot of people keep mis meeting me, you know, like why are you still wearing this watch? You've been wearing it when you've been flying together in the flying school. You have been wearing it since the type rating when you were in Kuala Lumpur when you have been flying right now in an airline flying all the jumbo jets you know flying 180 passengers every now and then four times a day so you can wear and everyone's just looking out to you you know because the pilot is the image of an airline you know that's how the the passengers portray how the pilots dress how do pilots look like but you're still wearing all this rubber strap one right now the reason being is that you know when I tell them the real value of it the real reason of it that's when they understand that you know people need to value things rather than just in numericals or numbers or something the figures aren't really the matter right now it's about the value of people you keep meeting different people and you keep getting the experiences you keep ex experiencing different activities or something but the value of it it's more than you know billions and billions of dollars he won't get that experience every now and then so that's why if you meet a really funny guy every now and then in the street when you're depressed and if that guy tends to make you laugh then I would say that guy is very very valuable you know that he has an immense quality he has an immense sense of humor that could light up any depressed person so that's a very valuable thing he might be a beggar or something but he still made your day you know with a with a hilarious joke so that's a very valuable thing so it's all about value in, in this life so being successful means you know knowing the value of things that's how you know that you are successful being successful is well opposite of success is failure so and I don't think no one wants to feel that you're a failure so you know whatever you don't feel that you're failure then it means you're successful I don't know but yeah I don't see wealth or fame or like you know as a as a success at all yeah um, success to me is living life to the fullest and that does not mean you know just being successful financially or or having fame um, you know I've had I've had a taste of both of those things and I, I can tell you that the most happy I, I've been uh, probably was when I was a kid and I didn't worry about the things like like money or fame or, or being popular it was about just having fun being myself and enjoying life and you know just playing outside in the world and uh, not having that care of all those things that, that burden people. Um, so I think if you can if you can keep that spark, uh, I think that's success. If you can keep that going, that that glowing throughout your life, um, then you're successful.
and that's what it looks like to me. Um, I mean, for instance, I'm, I'm a DJ, and uh, if I make people dance and smile, that's really a lot to me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, for me, the music is the way of life. It's almost like a food, and uh, I have to keep on having good food. <laughs> And uh, I want to share this good food with other people because uh, having good food is alone, it's boring <laughs> and it, it even tastes bad, so. You're a person who lived in her fantasy. That's so cool. I would like to be remembered as what I am, no two faces about it, and that's it. I just I want to be remembered by someone who tried to live, tried to live life on his own terms. Uh, so if that means I don't have kids, then uh, okay, well, it'll be a, it'll be an uncommon choice, but that's what I'll do. Or if I want to, you know. Um, have a crazy garden that probably is driving the neighbors nuts with how torn up my house looks. You know, I can do that or the, the idea is before I die, at least I'll, but hopefully constantly throughout the rest of my life, I'll just be, I'll still be traveling and, and living and traveling in an unconventional way, say even sleeping outside under the stars as a 60 year old man with a pack on my back. I don't want to, um, be defined. I, I just don't want to be someone that's defined by any any kind of boundaries. I just I don't yeah no, I don't want to be defined in any way. My uh, reputation precedes me, so maybe it's better I am remembered that way. That I'm a terrible. You heard that I'm a terror. <laughs> well. Uh, how would I be remembered? How would I want to be remembered? Uh, those who want to remember me, they will. I don't think I can dictate how anyone should remember me and I should be remembered. If I'm not remembered, is even better. But human tendencies are there and you can't control them. I want to be remembered by, as, uh, of course, a, a real person. Uh, well, like what I think about some of the people I know that are dead, you know, um, be it like Lemmy, who was a great guy, who was a friend of mine, who uh, I always remember him because he was like, you know, as famous as he was, well, not that I am, but uh, as big as he was, or a hero to so many people, he had time for everybody. So I always feel like uh, I want to, you know, I guess be him for like, oh yeah, you know, uh, 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 having time for people, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, everyone gets caught up in their own lives, you know, everyone's lives complicated. Whose life isn't complicated? You know what I mean? But it's like uh, having time for people. You know, if someone said, hey, we have, give me a, as I said to you the other day, Dutch calls me and said, do you want to ride for the airport? I said, yeah, I'll, if I'm not working, I'll be right there. You know what I mean? Sure, no problem. Do you want to come to state? Yeah, sure, no problem. Wow, oh, well, we'll figure it out, I don't care. Can you give me a ride here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you go back and get that receipt that you fucked up? I'm sorry. Can you go back and get that receipt you did wrong? Yeah, sure. I'll go back and get it. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like, no problem. You know, uh, uh, that's the people I remember, you know, be it like Mr. Lemmy or uh, uh, who else? I mean, Lem or, uh, well, I want to go back to Lemmy because he was such a nice guy and uh, did me a bunch of favours. No reason why he should. Don't know why he ever did, but he did. So I was like, well, that's my benchmark, you know what I mean? I would like to be remembered by my uh, exceptional sense of humour. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> by my kindness, I would say. Like someone you can always be someone you can always count on like the friend you can call that can come pick you at the pub or the friend that can uh, go along with you in a wedding because your boyfriend just <laughs> won't go with you anymore like yeah 
for my maybe my kindness open-minded also because I rarely judge people and I would like to be remembered by yeah for this like someone that I'm open-minded I don't mind weird stuff I do weird stuff all the time I think it's cool to be weird and uh, I think everyone should be weird so I would like to be remembered for that kind of funny girl who's always like saying yeah yeah let's do it I don't mind <laughs> No, never. It has to be, it's a part of life, just like, you know, both was a part of life, living is a part of life, getting a job, uh, getting a house, getting a shelter on top of your head, get, eating your food, everything is a part of a life, right? So even death is a part of your life, so you don't have to really be scared of um, dying due to any of the reasons. It could be anything, but the reasons are various but you don't have to really die because it's part of your life and you have to accept it with open arms that's you have to do it you don't have any kind of an option yeah i'm i actually now i can say i'm not scared of uh, dying maybe after dying is another new life and new things happen maybe who knows but uh, if I have uh, some, you know, cancer, if I had a cancer, if uh, I have uh, some bad uh, illness happen to me, for example, I think I've, I'm, I, I will be afraid of dying. dying. I, I, I met a lot of people who said they are not afraid of dying, but when they f know that death is coming soon, they want to live longer and longer so I don't know and but now I'm I can say I'm not afraid of no I can say no before I was scared because I was almost dead because of my heart disease but after I cured my heart disease I am not scared of dying because after that I can be grateful to be alive today and I am trying to do not like the best but better each day so I try to live by thinking uh, it's okay for dying today or 10 seconds later mm -hmm. but yeah in the past I was so scared when I had my first heart attack mm, that was so scary but now I don't because I already overcame the fear for the death mm. of course it's high scare but sometimes I understand that everyone must die. Uh, no one are living forever. <laughs> so sometimes I'm not scared. But the thing that I scare, I scare that how I die. No, not at all. No. Um. Um. Only only thing I'm scared of is dying with. Regret or yeah, but like like I laughed about it earlier. I feel like I haven't. I've done most of the stuff I wanted to do in my life, and yeah, I have nothing to worry about. Even I'm gone, so yeah, I'm not afraid of dying. To be honest, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, this is an honest answer. I think, uh, I, you know, if you're not afraid of dying, then uh, you, you know, you must think you have nothing to lose. And I feel like I have everything to lose uh, in dying. So it's I'm, I'm terrified of it. Um, I have so much to live for and so much I want to do with my life that you know I, I want to live it to the fullest and as long as I can. No. 
I'm just scared of dying cheap. And I had met with an accident few days ago, just this week. I had a my my taxi had a head-on collision, and I am I have a swollen leg and a right side. And all I knew is after that I told my childhood friend, I don't want to die on the road in an accident like this, where you know, it's you, you you're just like you just die because of someone's stupidity. I'm not scared of dying otherwise. Scared of dying? I mean, <clears throat> what does that mean? I mean, I don't know. Scared of dying? I don't think so. No, not at all. It's going to happen. If it, it's going to happen eventually, inevitably, it's going to happen. So if you're going to like, oh, I don't want to cross the road, I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to get on a boat, I don't want to, oh my God, you just, what well, life is that? Forget it. No, not at all. Not one bit. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. No, just, I just don't think about it. And but I do know it, it will happen. There's no reason to think about it, because um, it's you just accept it. It just happens. Then you move on with your life, and and that and that's it. You know, and it's just gonna happen. So that's that's probably the best way to look at it. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. I think for most of us, we think it's gonna happen and. 30 years or 40 years and hopefully for most of us that happens but for some of us and a lot of us it'll it'll happen tomorrow you know or when we least expect it or or in a year you know and it, not in the way that you expect it it's, that's almost certainly not to happen is the way that you're that you think you're gonna die it's almost not like certainly not gonna be that way so it's like just gonna accept it yeah What makes me happy is a really tricky question, but I I have learned to find you know pleasures and joy and happiness in small small things in my in my life. So I like to be happy with the smallest of the pleasures I can come across. But well, if you want a specific answer, my family makes me happy. And if there is something which is bothering my family, then that makes me sad. What makes me happy? I think when I see. Uh, the people that I love, they are happy, then I'm happy. My friends and family. Um, obviously. Uh, just being around people. But being alone makes me happy too, at the right moments. Um, nature. I like going on walks. Um, animals animals, kids, um, music, obviously, I was trying not to say that one is my first, um, music, drawing, and doing art, um, movies, basically all the good stuff, for sure. The number one thing for being happy is flying, you know, which you already know that I'm an airline pilot. So for me, the only thing that makes me way happy is being a pilot and just fly through the air. The only thing is, um, regarding flying, you need to have sometimes a very good imagination when it comes to, um, you know, operating an aircraft. So when you look outside your cockpit windows, which are like way better and way much more bigger than the normal passenger windows so you have to just imagine just just don't look inside just look outside and just kind of imagine yourself being a superman and uh, you just have to think that you know you're just sweeping down all the way at a very high speed just cutting through the clouds so it just gives you a very ecstatic feeling you know so that's a very good feeling that makes me very happy it really makes me high by literally being high and uh, when it comes about being sad, I would say I'm really missing this moment. Like I'm not able to share this moment right now with my dad because my dad was also a captain. So he didn't get the opportunity because he just passed away like around uh, four years back. But uh, that's the only moment that makes me feel sad sometimes when he is not able to look at me 
with that much amount of uh, proudness that he has for me and my mother is still there to witness all this stuff but the only thing that I miss about at the present moment is being with my dad. Life makes me happy and death makes me sad. That's the short answer. The most happy things mm, to be loved and to be trusted by someone, of course, maybe the boyfriend or family and uh, be trusted by the co-workers and the partners. I think like that, sad things, too, too many sad things happened already, so... Mm, yeah, I just don't want to lose anyone, perhaps. What makes me happy? What makes me happy is booking a flight. <laughs> booking a flight or looking up um, things to do and, you know, places I'm going, cool things to see and experience. But really, um, what makes me happy is, um, you know, family Sundays, which is like going to my mom's and um, having a nice meal, um, usually breakfast or brunch and then um, going to Mikey's mom's and um, you know Brian loves going to Abuela's and Mimi's and that's what he calls them and um, our mom's and um, just hanging out with our families it's I just love that um, when I was younger my extended family used to get together a lot and I never really I mean I took that for granted I never really understood like or felt the amazingness that was because my dad is one of 12 and there, there was probably like six aunts and uncles here at one point which was a lot <laughs> um, you know um, six out of 12 moving to an entirely different country to have here and you know all at one time was a pretty big deal and um, I think those kinds of things I took for granted before and I just won't anymore and um, I love when I get my family together and um, for bigger things or smaller things or whatever they might be and um, that genuinely makes me happy um, just to be with them and laughing with them and joking with them and... but I also really like booking flights <laughs> <laughs> um, now what makes me sad um, what makes me sad um, seeing atrocities across the world how uh, how we can sometimes treat each other so poorly and and just awfully um, or um, things like hate for no other reason but the color of someone's skin or hate for no other reason except for the religion someone chooses to follow. Um, I think those kinds of things, that the prejudices, the stereotypes, the, the, the racism, the, you know, all of those things are just awful things that make me incredibly sad. There are, are movies that I just can't watch because of that. I mean, and they're like award-winning films, but I know I can't do it because it just hurts me so much. Um, you know, I've only experienced racism a few times where, it, you know, like on a direct level that really hurt me and genuinely, you know, like, you know, I couldn't believe that it was happening and it was like, but I'm, you know, <laughs> but I'm American too or whatever the case is. Well, I suppose it's my relationship with, uh, my relationship with uh, my mum and dad. And Angie and Joey. I mean, and my sisters too, you know, uh, Sincere. I mean, you know, family is really all you end up with at the end of the day. You know, money and houses and cars and gold bullion and um, islands in the tropics or whatever, you know, that's, that's all great and well and good, but not really my thing, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's your family, I guess, you know what I mean, it really is. It's, I mean, if you, if you don't say that, I wouldn't know who wouldn't say that, but that, I'm just not second guessing anybody, but uh, I think that's really what it is. I think valuable thing, if you see, then it's what I love and that is journalism, my occupation. Uh, apart from that, even more valuable is my city. <laughs> I, re I, I, I really love my city um, with all its flaws. It's becoming in unlivable, but I still love it. The most valuable thing in my life would be my friends and my family. 
Uh, I know it's kind of cliche, but I would say life, if you're lonely in life, I think it was, must be the pain, pain, the most painful thing you can feel, it must be loneliness, because human beings are at first we were animals and I think we still are, we still are like a big huge family and we need contact, we need, um, we need to feel each other. And for me, really, my friends and family, I, I like my everything because I, as I like, I make people laugh, I, li I like to laugh a lot, I like to go out. It's kind of my, they are my everything because we are, we are I think we're, I believe our souls are connected. And I strongly believe that feeling someone during the day, like giving him a kiss to say hello, good morning, or hearing someone's voice when you're down, we, we can change. You, you, your day can, can make your day and, and I think so I don't believe that something material can make you happy it can make you happy for a short time because you just got it and you're like wow my god but because you can own someone you have to kind of gain his friendship or his love it's so powerful to have so many people in your lives so I would say my friends are my family are my real treasures I'd say it's a, a curiosity about the world because that's that keeps me wanting to to wake up then tomorrow and see what what else is happening or what else has happened or what else uh, um, people are doing or what else is out there in the world or what else has happened in the world. It's a curiosity about that that. Um, yeah, it makes me want to just wake up in the morning still um, when I have that, so, yeah. The most valuable thing to me is my humbleness, maybe. I don't know if you think I'm humble or not, but I try to be as humble as possible and I try to be as friendly as possible with everybody. And I think that is something which I would give you as an answer to this question. Open your mind and open your heart to new things and new people. I think that would be the one piece of advice that I could give to anybody around the world. No matter where you are in the world, if you did those things, um, you might learn a lot about yourself and about others. Okay, I want to tell the world that uh, must we love each other because if, if we hate, we hate each other, then the world will become war. So try to make love to the people, yeah, and try to open heart more. Because like, if we are not open to love the other people, then we will make like the world smaller. But if we open the heart wide uh, to love the people, then I think. Yeah, I want the people I love each other. <laughs> Be hardworking. Never give up. That's the only thing. Um, more primarily, I would say never ever give up. No matter how many times, you know, there are so many, so many examples in this world. So many great world leaders. So many great artists. And I always tell, pe tell people to never ever be depressed and never give up in life. Always be hardworking. No matter what happens, you have to keep you have to keep the goal in your mind. You have to fixate it. You have to engrave it inside, and you have to keep reminding yourself as to why you're doing it, and what will you get after you're doing it, after you get that stuff done. So you have to keep be hardworking, and you have to never give up. Just live, be yourself, and um, one more important is. Talk, they, they, they. I am told that because I open my mouth and I speak, I get into trouble. No, you don't. It's just at the crucial time. So you have to learn timing. I'm still learning. Being kind is the ultimate challenge when you have a hard time. So if you can do that, that'd be great. So I think that's it. There's a, uh, there's a there's a good piece of graffiti on the Camino. I think it's from that that 
turd burglar uh, uh, DJ Avicii. He, in one of his songs, he says, live a life you will remember. And someone graffitied that along the Camino and one of my friends that saw it, I didn't see it, told me about it. And it, that makes sense. It, it's kind of live a life that live a life that you will remember. It makes sense. Um, how, however that will be, but if um, likely, likely you know that what what, what that means. Yeah, uh, that, that that one that one makes sense. I want to share my experience. My experience is like uh, I want to tell like everyone. I always try. That is the best thing. Try and try to be uh, like uh, make your life better. Yeah. Take a rest. That's my advice. And if we take a rest, we can see more about our surroundings and we can sense um, our own um, real desires, what we want to do or what, where we are going to go. So we need to take a rest. Be patient, don't lose your heart and don't jump to conclusions. Give a time to everybody in this world. You may not like something about me or you may not like something about the other on, on face of it. But he or that person could have his own side. Try to know that side before you jump to conclusion and stamp something which is bad. I would say that if you decide something deep down deep down in your soul, in yourself, if you're convinced that it's going to be good for you, going to change something important in you, don't listen to anyone that would try to change your mind, because that would be your first mistake. Because maybe they would be right in some aspect of what you just decided, but then you, you, you wouldn't have made the mistake by yourself and someone, sometimes in, sli in life it's very important to be wrong because you just always learn. And if you were right, you would just have missed the opportunity of your life, you know, to do something super important or very original, or I don't know. So if you like, you know yourself, you can look in the mirror and say, do I want this? Do I want to do that? Do I want to be with that? person, whoever she is or he is, then do it. Don't always listen to, even if it's your mom, even if it's your dad, your best friend, uh, I don't know, the guy from the pub that look like so smart because, you know, he's always like giving good advice. Just listen to yourself. That would be my piece of advice on any subject. If you are 100% sure of yourself, then do it. It's okay to be you. Yeah. Be brave to love. Just love. Don't be free of anything. And uh, mm, a lot of people pr pr protect themselves so much, but uh, maybe you just give yourself first. Don't expect to get something from other first. I think is it. Just to not be close-minded to other people's ideas and not just cut them off. Go, ah, what, what, yeah, well, that's not like gonna happen in my life. Oh, I can't do that. You know, it's that blinkered, that blinkered just negativity that I don't like and I don't agree with it you know you don't you know uh, I put it this way I'll take a tip from anybody if you got a great idea why the hell would I say that's no I don't hear about it oh you got a tip oh what is it tell me yeah 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 tell me what's the what's the tip can I learn something sounds oh it sounds great or oh well that's okay maybe I don't like it or oh it's terrible but Please tell me your tip, and if I can turn that round and use it for something, bam, I'm a winner, man. And all it was was like, hey, you should do this. 
I should do that. Ah, oh, what a great idea. I'll take a tip from anybody. Please bring them on. Can you hear the traveler whisper in your head? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and it. Two roads are split behind the tree inside the wood. You should take the one that's traveled, cause there are no wrong turns. And pretty soon you'll know it ain't where you've gone, it's where you're going. Just what a tiny place you take up in the world When you haven't even risked or changed the color of your clothes The homeless man said by the bank road is time to say Today is the tomorrow that you long be yesterday So turn and face the sun Cause it ain't where you've gone, it's where you're